Headlines at two. A British man who abused children in Asia whilst posing as a charity worker gets multiple life terms. His youngest victim was six months old. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to BBC News. A 30-year-old photographer from Kent has been handed 22 life sentences after admitting abusing children in Malaysia. Richard Huckle's victims were aged between 6 months and 12 years old. It's thought he may have abused up to 200 children over a decade. He posed as a devout Christian and English teacher to get access to children, filming and photographing his depraved acts. Angus Crawford has the latest. The judge told Huckle that his whole life revolved around his own sexual gratification. He also responded to a letter that was sent to the judge by Huckle this morning. He said, you are not genuinely remorseful. And then, in the public gallery, a woman stood up and shouted, you deserve a thousand deaths. They are too good for you. You said you're not really pro at anything except being a paedophile. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Confronted with his crimes... No he says no comment. Huckle has no answer for police. This is how he wanted others to see him. A bright young man training to be a teacher, here with the British Council. But Huckle sought out children in the poorest areas of the city. He took them on days out and bought them food, and he always had his camera with him. He gained their trust. They called him uncle. But all this was a prelude to rape and abuse. There may have been 200 victims. He even wrote a digital diary about the abuse. Here, he celebrates his crimes. I'd hit the jackpot, a three-year-old girl as loyal to me as a dog, and no one seemed to care. Huckle travelled widely, often returning to the UK. The question is, are there victims here? Have investigators from the National Crime Agency done enough to find out? He attended a church in London. We can't identify for legal reasons. Online, he boasted about making friends with children and going on day trips. We now know that the NCA only contacted that church last week. That's 18 months after Huckle was first arrested. Today, the agency said it had voluntarily referred itself to the police watchdog, the IPCC. Can you have a look at this for us? Could we have done something differently? Have we got lessons that we can learn as a consequence of this? We, we as an agency have a culture of continually learning, continually developing, and if we can learn lessons about the appropriateness of our response, we will learn them. Richard Huckle, Christian, photographer, predatory paedophile. Just 30, he faces most of the rest of his life behind bars. One other thing we have learned today, an important fact, the Australian police who identified Huckle also identified 17 other British men. That was 18 months ago. We've learned today that now five are behind bars. Two committed suicide, but another six are the subject of police investigation and still at large. One of the worst paedophiles ever seen by the British courts has been given 22 life sentences. 30-year-old Richard Huckle was handed a minimum term of 25 years for 71 offences that he's admitted. He's suspected of abusing up to 200 children in Malaysia. The judge told him that his life revolved around his obsession with sexual gratification by child sex abuse. Sky's crime correspondent uh, Martin Brunt is at the Old Bailey for us now. And Martin, what did you hear in court? Well, the judge took the best part of an hour telling Richard Huckle what he thought of him uh, before he arrived at the sentence. In fact, he told Huckle at the start that I'm going to be speaking for so long, such is the complexity and the gravity of this case, that you might as well sit down. So Huckle sat down uh, and listened to what the judge said, and there was absolutely no reaction from uh, the guy in the dock. He simply stared straight ahead at the judge while he was talking and he told him at the start that he thought that he uh, would pose a severe risk to uh, young children for a very long time. He said he'd listened to his uh, pleas of remorse but he said he didn't recognise that. He said you've got regrets uh, but no remorse um, and he went on to say that the scale length and depravity of his offending meant that he wasn't going to abide by normal sentencing guidelines. He was ripping up the guidelines and would decide himself how long 
he would give him. And in the end, he gave him a minimum of 25 years. 22 life sentences, and he must serve 25 years before the parole board might consider whether he was safe to be released. And the judge said this, you were and are sexually obsessed with children. You have spent years abusing them. In one of your postings, you stated that you had become consumed by your paedophilia. It is clear from your postings on hidden encrypted paedophile websites on the dark web and from the manual you were in the process of drafting that your life revolved around your obsession with your own sexual gratification by child sex abuse. Now, we spoke earlier to the Crown Prosecution Service and it gave its view on Richard Huckle. The sheer depravity of this case is difficult to put into words. For almost nine years, Richard Huckle committed offences against at least 23 victims, uh, including multiple rapes of very young children. An extremely dangerous offender has been taken out of circulation. The Crown Prosecution Service, working together with the National Crime Agency, uh, built a strong case and their determination meant that Richard Huckle had no option but to plead guilty to 71 offences. Huckle was uh, brought to, well there wasn't a trial because he admitted his offences, but he was prosecuted by the Crown Prosecution Service in this country for crimes that he committed in Malaysia and that's still an unusual thing it was a new law that was brought in in 2008 for so-called sex tourists it's thought and it appears that nobody keeps records of these things but it's thought that Huckle was only the seventh British man to be convicted in a British court for child sex crimes committed abroad and the agency that investigated him here was the National Crime Agency, which was given a tip-off about his online activities, the posting of indecent images, by the Australian police who'd stumbled across Huckle in one of its own investigations. Uh, the NCA wasn't told initially of Huckle's identity. It wasn't clear from what he'd filmed and posted on the dark web. But uh, investigators from the NCA were able to establish that it was Richard Huckle, and they arrested him when he flew back in Christmas 2014 for a family holiday uh, with his family in Kent. So the NCA investigated him, persuaded him to plead guilty. But there is one issue that, uh, that is still to be explored because the NCA became aware that Huckle was connected to two churches in the UK. One we can't identify, another at his hometown in Ashford in Kent. And he visited that Kent church uh, and the other unnamed church while he was on bail for two months around Christmas 2014. And the NCA have said that although it's pretty sure that Huckle did not uh, commit abuse against any British children during that period, it has referred itself to the police watchdog, the In Independent Police Complaints Commission, for it to establish whether the NCA perhaps could have done more in its action or lack of action with those two churches. This is what the NCA told us. We're in an agency that collects our culture is to continually learn, develop, learn our lessons. And what we thought appropriate was be in these circumstances was, okay, could we have done something differently in relation to the churches? Despite the fact we know he's not committed any offences, we still made a decision last week that we would make a voluntary referral to the IPCC. To Huckle's now gone off to begin his minimum 25-year sentence. We've heard from an awful lot of people uh, during this case, but we haven't heard from his parents, the parents who threw him out of their house when they discovered what he had done. They appear to have disappeared. They sold the family house in Kent, and none of us who followed this case have found any trace of them. But I did catch up with his sister-in-law a while ago who told us that the whole family had washed their hands of Richard Huckle, do not want to discuss him, never want to hear about him again.